Hello again everyone, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. Beautiful afternoon sunlight today and I'm making another video to show you something that I often find with the Slanomatic machines such as this 403A. Uh, you will also sometimes experience uh, what I'm experiencing here on your 401As as well. Uh, this machine was a tour de force of technology in 1956. It does a lot of wonderful things. And as I mentioned before, when machines become more complex, they uh, have the potential to, to be more problematic. And that's not a reflection of the quality. The quality of this machine is incredible. We are still in, in the 1950s, we're still in Singer's great age of well-made machines. Uh, it's you know, it's, it's engineered and manufactured with very high levels of quality. So the, so the issue here is not that it was a poorly made machine, or even in, you, you could argue it was not poorly engineered. It, it does some wonderful things. However, I have noticed, um, and it's been a while since I've overhauled any of the 400 Slenomatics, but I do remember that uh, of all the sewing machines I've worked on in the past, if a sewing machine has been sitting for a really long time, um, some machines are more fussy than others when you go to wake them up. And you know, a good old straight stitch only, straight stitch dedicated Singer machine is one of the most friendly to restore because although they can freeze up and lock up, um, they are more forgiving of sitting for long periods, even in places they shouldn't have been stored. That's not true for this model. I, I, I overhauled a <clears throat> Singer 500A, which was the, uh, the Rocketeer body style of what was essentially pretty much the same machine with a few changes made. Uh, the 500 would be the, the uh, 1958 new Rocketeer styling version of the 401A, but they also made a 503, uh, which was the new body style of the 403. The point here is that uh, when, when I restored the, the last, that last machine, the 500, I told the new owner, I said, be sure and use this machine occasionally. Um, if you let this machine sit, you know, for a year or more, uh, you might be able to sit down and sew fine with it. But they are more fussy. They don't like to sit as long. And this is particularly true if you uh, only say, you know, you might have one of these and you just do some straight stitch sewing. This is a machine that really likes to be put through its paces with decorative stitching and zigzag stitching. Uh, I have mentioned to all of you before that on most sewing machines in the vintage world that can do zigzag, um, if they sit for a long time and they start to get problematic and not willing to function, it's usually the zigzag function that will cause problems before the, um, the, the straight stitch, right? Making a straight stitch is, from, from the sewing machine mechanical viewpoint, not quite as complex as a zigzag stitch. A lot more is going on, uh, and it's just something to be aware of. And I'll show you, I mentioned in one of the earlier videos, if I can remember which one it was, I was talking about how this was referred to as a floating needle bar. Now, companies have different methods for how they created zigzag movements. This was a design by Singer. Of course, it has the slanted needle, but what makes it complex isn't really the slant so much as the way Singer chose to allow this machine to function. <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna zoom in here, and I want you to see, I'm gonna actually move the, the camera's position just a second. Okay, we're, we're on more of a forward face here. I'm gonna change the angle, and let's get a close-up shot. And I think this might be easier to see without the foot. So I'll take the foot off. Those of you who've been watching videos on this machine know that it, when I got it, it had a bolt in the place where the thumb screw is. And I was worried they had stripped it, but I had an extra uh, uh, thumb screw for the um, sewing foot. And uh, fortunately they did not strip the threads on the presser bar. That made me very happy. I could have done it without that, but it's nice not to have had to deal with that. So. Uh, you take it you take things when you can get them so now you have a better view here of the needle and the opening now you'll see right now it's all the way over to the right but that's because it's been getting some coaxing from me if you look up here I have the settings I have the needle 
uh, it is set for center position. And then I have come here and come all the way over. Uh, five means it's set for wide zigzag. I also have the cam. This is cam number zero, which you must have for the 403 or the 503s if you want anything other than straight stitching. Okay. Uh, then this system is a little more simple than the than the top of the line model because the 401 a uh, the vast majority of its stitches are, are basically done with mechanical uh, built-in cam sets so it's even more complex but this one uh, you have to install the cam the cam is installed properly I stall it when the the width stitch width lever is at straight right and then I've since come over. Now, just wanted to show you guys that. I've got it set on long stitch length right down here. And all of these controls that I've just shown you are working fine. I've gotten them working, they're lubricated. Now, I'm gonna show you what I've been doing and what sometimes, this is kind of a, kind of a, you kind of do it as you go system of trying to understand <clears throat> how to get the zigzag to work again. Everything up top, appears to be in good working order, but I'm getting some stiffness over here. Now notice it's coming down, not quite all the way over on the right, but not bad. Now watch, I come up, I'm, I'm turning the hand wheel with my hand. I don't want the motor on right now. Now it comes over to the left. And since I got the machine, it's been doing this. Notice it comes over to the left. And then it, when it comes back, even though it's supposed to be on the widest zigzag, it's only coming back to center. And there it goes again, right? Now, it should not be doing this, but I'm not surprised that it is. It, all of the slantomatic multi-stitch machines, unless you get one that is just absolutely in mint condition, um, uh, they, they typically will be very cranky when you wake them up. And this is, I'm remembering this, so I'm not surprised at all, okay? It doesn't mean anything, that doesn't mean the machine was, you know, was, was damaged, it, uh, it doesn't have a broken part. It is simply uh, part of a system that is extra vulnerable to sitting for long periods. So if you have one of these and you think, oh no, how am I ever gonna fix this? Don't give up um, if you have this problem. I'm trying to think of the best angle to show this to you here. Uh, so what I've been doing is manually on my own, I have been working to, to get some movement in here. Now, I'm going to zoom in. I'm gonna to try to get this to see if it'll show up for you guys. Not always sure if you can see, but I want you to keep, let's get a little bit different view here. And I want you to keep your eyes on, I've had something to point with, right here. This little space, because you're gonna see this needle bar is going to pivot. Now, yeah, it pivots out, but I needed to pivot uh, to the right so that I can get this needle to move fully. So what I'm gonna do, right, I'm gonna have to pan back just a bit because I need you guys to see what my hands are doing on both ends of this. So this, this left side of the needle clamp, I'm gonna put my thumb here and uh, the, the machine is unplugged. You don't want the machine plugged in. You accidentally touch the foot pedal while you're doing this. You do not want that. Always leave the machine unplugged unless you're getting ready to, to do some um, overall testing. <coughs> now, <coughs> stitch testing. Okay, now notice that this, this is the needle bar and it was called a floating needle bar because of the way it can move. It can move um, obviously it, it moves up and down for straight stitching and it can go side to side for zigzag. It also has some other movements. It's a rather fascinating piece of technology that Singer engineers created. And again, when it was new, there's no reason why it wouldn't have performed beautifully. And when they are properly overhauled, they can perform beautifully. But again, if you get one of these and it's not working right, chances are it's cranky because it's been sitting. And it, this, this particular uh, machine design does not like to sit for periods, and that's why they take a good bit of work to wake up, but I think they're worth it, obviously, or I wouldn't have bought it. Okay, so I'm going to hold, this is the needle bar. I'm not gonna hold it here. I'm gonna put a finger back on this side. Now watch what happens. I'll, I'll hold the bar just for now. I want you to see what I'm doing, okay? Now watch. 
don't know if you guys saw that. There was a little click, right? Now, remember where I told you to watch. Watch right there. And what you'll do is there's a, there's a bar inside a sleeve. And I'm going to zoom back in so you guys can see. Now you know where my hands are, 6 o'clock and 12 o'clock. Let's see. Now, focus right there, right? That little spot. Now, watch what happens when I push it back to the left right so it's it's actually dancing and pivoting like this and what I've been doing is I've been putting three in one penetrant in here and uh, then I went and I actually added some of the liquid wrench uh, I don't particularly care for the liquid wrench it stinks it has a I think it has some kerosene in it, it takes a long time to dry and it's more odorous than a lot of these other things any of these things can be can be stinky and you want to use them outside or with really good ventilation. I used a little bit of the liquid wrench only because it typically will help where other penetrants fail, but it's not the first one I go to because I don't like the way it smells. Anyway, there you go. Uh, so uh, notice if I, if I push in again, you see that? What should be happening when the zigzag is functioning fully wide, as you saw the setting I have, this machine should be going back and forth, back and forth. But what's happening is, as it's coming in, it's not coming out all the way. Something's, you know, and I suspect it's a lubrication issue. I don't think anyone did anything to adjust it funny. And it's just simply working, uh, working back and forth, uh, reintroducing, move, reintroducing movement to a part of the machine that probably hasn't seen it in a long time. And that's... It can always be an issue. Um, some of the Italian and German machines, the Foffs and the Neckies, they can, they can actually lock up because their tolerances were so tight. That's why they almost have no vibration. Um, with the Singers, that's not usually the issue. The issue with the Singers is, in this particular Singer, is simply that the mechanism uh, that drives full zigzag is sticky, right? Remember, remember I've told you guys in past videos, it's, you know, it's, see now, Ah, I don't know if you guys see this, now it's bouncing back. See, before I had to pull it out, right? So let's, let's zoom back out. I want you to see what the needle's doing, and we'll see if, this may not have fixed it, guys. <laughs> if you have never or over, overhauled or restored a vintage sewing machine, uh, once you do, you will realize that it is a, uh, it, patience is required, <laughs> needless to say. Okay, so take a look again. I've got my with setting on five, which is the widest. Let's come back. I want you to see, I think you can now see the needle and this little bar moving at the same time. So let's see if it now will work on its own. If I push here, right? Now, notice it's come all the way over to the right. Now, aha, uh -huh, something has changed, right? Well, we thought so. See, now, now we have to push back over, okay? Now, it's, it's slowly, but see, now it wants to come right back to the center again. If that happens, just work with it for a while. Remember, it's been sitting a very long time, and the machine is not going to take 40 years to, to undo itself. And if you're not sure what part to, to, to alter, take a look. When, when I do this, right, this moved, see if there's anything else on the machine that moves or wants to move. Right? And that will help you figure out what's, what's going on here. Right? So we're to the left. Now I want to come all the way over. Okay. So this, this floating needle bar that Singer in, uh, created is really incredible. Okay. Now let's look up a minute. I want to show you what else is moving. Because sometimes when you're trying to get a machine to function and it's being stubborn, and you've, you've lubricated, you've put oil, where is my oil? And I'll show you some of the, the other parts that needed help. So here, obviously, this is that little place where the bar is, is going in and out of a little sleeve there, right? So, okay, so when I push in, it's bouncing back to the far right, which is good because I've been playing with this back and forth, and it was I'm sure it's sticky inside. But look else, look what else is moving. It's pivoting here, right? So you've got a pivot point here. 
and a pivot point here, right? You have, here's a piece that's stationary, this piece is moving. So if you don't have a guide, you don't have your manual, that's okay because you still want to oil any of the pieces that you know metal is moving against metal. So we're gonna go, we'll start right up top here, right? And it's okay if you use more than one drop. Remember, this is restoring. We're not, this is not normal, oh, I need to oil my machine because I'm getting ready to sell the project. We're trying to unlock something here. So you would never use more than one drop normally, but this is not normal here. Okay, now watch this. What you're seeing is there's an arm up top. Let's see if we can catch the arm here. I'm trying to get all this in one shot here for you guys. Now watch this. Okay. Look at the arm. I don't think it's coming in the camera here. Let's move up just a bit more. There we go. Pay attention to this arm. Okay. Now watch what happens. See the arm move and then it moves back. Put your focus right there. Okay. That arm has been trying to move. Everything up here is lubricated, but I suspect we were having some sticky points here. Where else would we want to look? Okay. So. We know we've got this piece that needs to move. I've just oiled here, but we've got another point right here. Because if you look, when the needle bar is moving, but look here, this, this black piece is not. You want a drop there. And remember, it could have been decades since any oil was put in. And so if you're not sure, go ahead and get some oil between any of these moving parts. Again, you want to, um, to you want to be, patient and just keep exploring and you will find this. Typically I can tell you that machines with zigzag on average take me longer to overhaul. They have the potential for more issues. Now if it's been used recently and it was stored in a great under great conditions, I don't always it doesn't mean you're always going to have stuck zigzag. So don't I don't want to give you that impression. Okay. Now let's turn back down here and see what's going on with our needle. Now it is bouncing back to the right. The question is, oh, by the way, when I was trying to make it go to the right, doing it very carefully, again, I, uh, I put some liquid wrench in over here. And I did this yesterday, and then I let it sit overnight. Just because you put a penetrant oil like liquid wrench or 3M1 oil, which you do not use for lubricating your machine, those penetrant oils are for helping you get things unstuck. Okay, don't, don't, don't use those in place of sewing machine oil. Please don't do that. You, you will not, your machine will not function properly. Uh, what was happening is, and we'll go back and we'll turn this back to the, <clears throat> so you guys can see the needle. What was happening when I was trying to coax it, I could get the needle over here, but it was turning the hand wheel gave me some resistance. Why? Because, now let's see what it does. She's coming up, oh yeah. It just went to the right for the first time on its own, right? It's kind of like the machine needed training wheels. It just needed a little help. Yay! All right, that makes me happy because I've been, I started with this yesterday afternoon. Uh oh, oh there it went. See? <laughs> now it's gone back to center. What you're seeing here, guys, is that machines, when they come back, sometimes they come back, you know, like an old car trying to start, right? They might stutter, they might work a little bit, and then, you know, or like a lawnmower. Some of you folks are getting lawnmowers if you if you have the old style lawnmowers that um, you have to hand crank and they don't want to start they've been sitting all winter that's kind of a good metaphor okay now it's just now it's going back to the left as I wanted it to now okay now I'm asking it to come over to the right now let's see what it does does it want to go over it no it's still not behaving exactly right there we go to the right to the left to, whoops, <laughs> it almost wanted to. Again, this is something that you can experiment with. Um, it can take quite a while to, to figure out how to do this, guys. And it's just, it's, it's just, like I say, trial and error, right? So notice I'm very gently, I'm turning, I've got my right hand on the hand wheel and I'm playing with that. And, and I'm basically trying to coax it over. Come on, go to the right. It doesn't want to, but again, it's not totally resisting me, or that would be that would be uh, unfortunate. Uh, you you kind of have to do this as you go. Okay. All right. So I keep trying to coax it over, and I'm getting. I know it doesn't look like progress. I'm actually getting some progress here, but again, it can take a lot of effort 
to get the machine to, to behave the way it was meant to because, see, it's still wanting to work its way back to the center, but uh, I'm not dissuaded, <laughs> right? So, it, and, and when, it's on, when it's on its stroke and it's going to the left, don't fight it. You can end up uh, causing problems that way. So again, it's on its left side of the zigzag, let it go there. And then when it's coming up and the needle is in its high position, then you wanna coax it over and just get, you're, what you're doing is you're kind of giving it training wheels, right? You're helping it along. Adding uh, just up, up top here, guys, just putting in some extra oil in the places I've shown you all before. Now, let's see what it wants to do. Does it want to come over? Ha. Again, there's a spring, there's a spring loading in here, and uh, the spring is designed to work. It is it's plenty powerful, but again, it's working against friction of basically old oil and goo or lint that's been sitting there for God knows how long. Look, now I've got it here, left, right left, right, left, right. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing, right? I haven't done any test stitching with this machine yet, folks, but I wanted to show you uh, something you have, you often may find that you need to do. Now, other zigzag machines that can be notorious for getting frozen, in the zigzag particularly, are the Italian Neckies, which are some of the finest zigzaggers ever made. They are, they are just marvels of engineering for their time. But again, although the mechanism they use is different than this one, you still want to, um, you still might have to gently and patiently coax it back to zigzag. But in order to do that, again, you need to know which parts of the machine are, are uh oh, it went back to the center there. It's not ready yet, not totally, but it's getting there. Uh, but you have to patiently coax them back, right? So I know I'm making progress here. It just seems like three steps forward, two steps back. One thing I wanted to add here, uh, when I was talking to you all about the needle bar and trying to get it to do its full zigzag, there's an area I also wanted to point out. Now I've talked about lubricating and how dry this machine was. There's a place that would be easy to miss if you didn't know it was here and it involves the movement of your needle bar. But it is, uh, it is actually buried so far beneath, it's hard to see. But I'd like you guys to take a look to the right, I've got my little uh, cruller tool here to point, to the right of the flap that you see here. Oh, that's my little flashlight, it is magnetized. Um, the, when you are looking, at your machine from up top. You won't even necessarily notice this unless you are um, uh, watching it when you are trying to get it to do zigzag. So let's see if we can't do that. I'll show you. Right here, I'm going to keep pointing. I'm going to try to, I'm going to have to zoom in. It's really tough to show you guys, but I want you to see this. Maybe you'll be able to find it. Okay. Now, take a look at this spot right here. Okay, keep your eyes there. I'm going to turn the hand wheel. And when I do, see that coming in? Now watch the flap. As the flap moves to the left, because it's getting ready for the left side of the zigzag, you will see there's a spot right here. And there's actually metal on metal going in. Let's do it again. I'll turn the hand wheel. You guys can see it. Okay. This is a little bit easy. Now you can see the space it made. You have you're basically seeing something similar that you saw over, over here when you're looking down into the, uh, into the needle bar. That's not coming up on camera, sorry guys. But anyway, let's get right down there. Okay, right there. See me pointing right here, okay? Now I'm gonna try again, I'm holding the camera. Bear with me, notice when I come in, that, that rod goes into an opening and then it comes back out. You really want to get sewing machine oil here and you may need penetrant if it's stuck. Because if this is stuck, right, it's, it's start of oil, that's what was basically 
this, along with the other issues, was causing the, uh, the needle bar to stick and not do zigzag. Now that I have, I didn't actually put any penetrant on this, this side, I'll turn it again and let you see. Now that I've oiled it, she's working beautifully and I'm getting zigzag on both sides. So there was a maintenance reason for this. So if you guys ever get in this situation, you're thinking, oh, anyway, I wanted to be sure we focused so much on this side, right? Where you could see, if I point for you again, this was back over here by the needle bar. See where I'm putting my little pointer here? This right here. You need oil there because when the machine is, you see it moving. Now watch as it comes over. Watch now. You see the space how it how it got how it got wider. Now it's coming in. Well, that same thing is happening up here underneath <laughs> underneath your your uh, your cam stack and down below to the right of this flap. And again, it's one of those things you. You may even need someone to shine a flashlight down in there while you turn it, turn the hand wheel with your hand and you will see the movement I'm referring to. Again, it's really tough to, to, to get on camera, but if you guys are aware of it, you will be able to find it. Again, get someone to hold a flashlight and as you're looking, you will see. And if that piece is not moving, sliding in and out, it's going to affect your zigzag. So another little clue into unlocking uh, cranky machines that have been sitting a long time. I hope that was helpful and um, keep watching. We've got more videos to come.